Hi, this is Jay Baker Raw Show number 191. And tonight's just Tim and I. Just Tim and I talking uh, about all. this. And it's the last day of February. Last day. Unless you're watching live, you won't know this in time. <laughs> but it's the last day to enter our February photo contest in uh, both our beginner group and our um, JPEG Raw group. I, I do have a flaw in, in that plan there, Tim, that I revealed uh, yesterday and, and a couple of days earlier. So if you go on the website, there's only one photo contest link, okay? Mm -hmm. You go there, you enter your photo contest. But after I got the couple of photos, because most people enter through Facebook, but a few people always now, or from now time to time, go onto our website and they choose, um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up here. They choose to go to the link and down and do it that way. Maybe they're not a member of Facebook, you know, whatever right. else. But now that we have two contests going and they don't always have the same topic, like this month, they don't have the same topic. When they send it in, and I don't know which contest they're entering. Now, the topics were widely different, and the photo only fit one of the topics. I could figure it out. And I think I did figure this one out. Um, but often, an image can, would work for either one. And the person who's entering probably is only aware of one of them. So they, right, don't, have, they, don't, they don't have a reason to even tell me. So it's something I, that's my fault. I'm going to have to figure it out uh, a different way to not make it overly, you know, um, so now you think you were able to figure out which one was which one? I think so. Time? Yeah, I think so. Let's let's go. Let's look at what I'm talking about. So you go there, you go to the page, you go to photo contest, photo contest entry, and we'll see how my bandwidth does right now. And the the theme says shadow and portraits, which is the one we're doing in our JPEG Raw group, right. not the beginner group. But you know, people don't generally read everything that's on a page, so they may not they may not see that and uh, may not do anything with it. So then you you know you go through that and you and you enter it and upload it or whatever else. So I get the image and then I, uh, it, if they filled in everything they were supposed to fill in, but I don't know what contest it's for. But the right. image the image they did happened at least a second person happened to only fit one of the the contests. So I figured that one out, but I will. Get that fixed before next month. <laughs> yes, yes. Otherwise, you just have to submit it into both. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as I'm looking at, as we're uh, streaming tonight, and we're streaming only to YouTube tonight, but Skype has done some adjustments, and they're sending even higher quality. So you see in Tim, and, you know, high def tonight. Um, Not as sure he should always, <laughs> As he should always be seen. Uh, and I'm looking at my bandwidth you know, who is we're like right at the max. So hopefully you don't get any buffering. But guess I got a knock on the door about 15 minutes ago from a guy who was trying to go door to door trying to sell AT&T service. Generally, I don't like people coming to the door and selling right. me stuff. But this is a nice guy. And, you know, trying to sell me band, uh, you know, Internet connection. I generally will sit and talk to the guy. So I did. I talked to him. And the first thing I want to know was, are you installing GigaPower, which is AT&T's gigabit up and down network? And he goes, no, nah, it's not GigaPower. And then I said, well, I already know it's not going to be fast enough. I, I have 130 down and the five up, and the five up is what I want to solve. And he said, yeah, it's not going to work. I only have 24, you know, this is only 24 down and two up. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he's walking around? Yeah. And so I, I guess that would be good for a DSL user. You know, that would if you're switching off a DSL to that. And I think it is a backbone that is maybe for the future because he said uh, what we'll probably roll out before Giga Power in this area is 100, and, 100 down, 50 up. I said, You do that and you got a new customer. I'll do that all day long. So we'll see. Maybe we're going to be getting more power here um, soon. But the reason I bring it up is he asked me, Why would I need, you know, all that upload speed? Because I told him five wasn't enough. And so we got to talking about JPEG to RAW and all that. So he, he maybe he's just a salesman trying to, you know, say nice things to me. But he seemed to be an honest kid, and he um, seemed interested in the show because he's a graphic designer on the side. Oh. So who knows? We may have a new fan come and subscribe there to the show. There you go. Yeah. 
Hey, just to make you a little jealous, I, I'm 80.9 down and 77.3 up. Yeah, that, that, I just tested it. That's <laughs> sickening. That's sickening. Uh, Tim. All right. So I ha- just, a, <laughs> just have a few things to talk about tonight. One is um, I've got a couple of people asked me this question. I know it's been talked about other places, but I figured I should mention a little bit about it, too. And that is Nikon announcing that they have an extraordinary, and I'll do the quotes, extraordinary loss. Um, And they're shutting down one of their their camera lines and, you know, early retirement for like a thousand people. So the question was from this person, hey, should I sell all my Nikon gear while it's still worth something and move over to Canon? And, you know, I... Don't want to give you advice. One, I'm not giving you investment advice. I'm not a, um, what do you call it, a, a financial advisor. I'm not giving you investment advice. And ultimately, you got to make your own decision because who knows what happens 10 years from now, 50 years from now, five years from now. Who knows what, what's going to happen with them? But right. the, in accounting terms, and that's what they were using when they announced an extraordinary loss, in accounting terms, an extraordinary event is something that's out of the ordinary. It could right. be extraordinarily good, extraordinarily bad. It doesn't mean that this is a company-ending event. What it means is it's not normal. Um, it doesn't always mean that this is a fundamental problem with the company that they will go bankrupt. And that this is just you know one of the steps before they go, go under. Um, it typically comes from when you shut down you know a division or shut down. You're laying off a bunch of people and you have losses assumed with it. Let's say, for instance, you know, I'm sure Microsoft and Apple and all these guys have extraordinary losses all the time. It's a normal cost of business for them, mm-hmm. even though the term is extraordinary. Um, and what, what it, what, I'm, looking, I'm reading chat. What it is, you know, let's say Microsoft buys a company. Let's say they buy Skype and they way overpay for Skype, which they did. And at some point down the road, they kill off the Skype line. They have all this, this stuff sitting on the balance sheet, all this goodwill and other stuff I won't get into, sitting on the balance sheet that they have to write off, and they'll consider that an extraordinary loss. It doesn't mean right. that there's anything wrong with the company. In Nikon's case, they ended one of their, their camera lines that they really never did take off, and that's why they were, they were ending it. They ended one of their camera lines. They laid off or they early retired a thousand people. um, And those things resulted in an extraordinary loss charged to their income statement. Those are a lot of accounting terms. I know I'm I'm boring you with those things, but (laughs) just to say (laughs) they're not dead. Does this mean that, you know, this is good news? No, it doesn't mean it's good news, but it doesn't mean that they're dead. And I'm going to try and find this for you here. Let's go over to Nikon's, um, Stock, and if we look at this, is where if you ever do investing again, I'm not giving you investing advice. Yeah, there's that 15 yeah. percent plummet. <laughs> Any, anything with a chart, and this could be you know anything that you can chart depends on how you look at it. If you look at a one month chart, you go, oh my god, look at that drop. They're in trouble. That is the end of a company. They they, they haven't even come back to where they were. We expand out to three months. It still doesn't look that great. You had this massive drop, and they still haven't got back to where they right, were. But three months ago, that's where they were. Yeah, and then if you go back to a year, huh? They're still from a year ago. They're still up pretty decently. Uh, I can go to five years. Yeah, over five years, they are down a little bit. So it's really, a blip. it really yeah. depends on where you, where you're at and looking at that chart. Right. I would say that that it's not great news for Nikon having to kill off a line, and really now they're having to focus as far as their camera business. Just on the the DSLR and the higher end DSLR um, line, so you know that puts them more at risk. When you look at Canon, you look at Sony; they're very, very diversified companies. You know, I, I don't know what their percentages are, but Canon has lots of other revenue streams outside of cameras. You, know, you think about the printers, you think about the copiers, you think about whatever else they make. I don't know what their number one money maker is. Sony has got just massive you know, other things behind them um, that they're doing. So you, you, they could stomach a loss in one of their divisions, like a, a camera division, and not be too concerned with it as long as everything else is going okay. Uh, where if Nikon is is narrowing down the company, they got to really perform in that, in that niche. 
So if they're going to focus on DSLRs, and I think they're going to also introduce some mirrorless, if they're going to focus on that, and that is going to be you know, where they put all their effort, they really need to perform there and to, to keep customers. Yeah, I agree. Um, I have no plans. Personally, I have no plans to sell my Nikon equipment and go anywhere else. Um, you know, I'm not, and I'm not going to advise somebody it's just starting out to go with something else. Because Nikon, Nikon's a 100-year-old company. There's no guarantee they make it to 105, but there's no guarantee they won't make it to 200. You never right. know. Anything, really, anything can happen. Yeah, absolutely. So that's it for Nikon. Any thoughts that's, there? That's it for our Nikon. That, <laughs> the way you say that, that sounds horrible. That's it for Nikon. Uh, and you know what? Uh, you wouldn't believe things can go out, out of business, but it, something can happen and change the fortunes of a company at any given moment, especially yeah. today, especially when you're in technology. You pick the wrong line of ty- uh, of uh, equipment. Let's say it's uh, – Let's say a company stayed with plasma TVs versus going to LEDs, and it could put them out of business. Look at Samsung. I mean, you see the new commercials for the phones. Uh, they talk about how their quality standards are better than anybody's out there. I'm like, you almost put yourselves out of business when the Note mm-hmm. 7, when it, when it blew up. And they're going to do a lot. I mean, I, you listen to it. They're probably going to have the safest phone or the most tested phone on the market before it comes out the next ones. Yeah, but, they, they better. Or else that could right, be. Anything else happens. And now they're, that could they're be, a very diversified company, too. Yes, they are. It, it helps. Or, or, or you, yeah. Hey, just look at, uh, you, you think about it then, look at uh, Volkswagen Audi with that whole diesel gate. Yeah. I mean, they're. I, I'm wondering if they're even going to come out of it. It really, it really, when you get in a situation like that, it really depends upon how you um, respond to the controversy, to, uh, to the, you know, whatever's going on with you. It really depends on how you respond to that. Right. Yes. Uh, K2 out there in chat says, uh, he's a network, he work, I work for a network aggregator. I can find you something that's going to, might cost you. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to have to aggregate a whole bunch of network services to get faster uploads and that stuff. I'll just, Live within my means for now, and then whenever something else comes, suffer I will, for now. I will move. I will not be a loyal customer if you know, if the company I'm with is not the fastest. I'm out. All right. So next thing I have up, Tim, is I don't know if you saw this post by uh, G A U R A V. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he says um, this is in our Facebook group. Hello, everyone. My name is. How do you pronounce that name, Tim? Yeah, I'm not even going to. I'm just going to say G. Yeah. My name is G. That, that, that's a G. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry, however you pronounce your name. Uh, I hope, I hope uh, you realize that I'm horrible with pronouncing names. My name is G, and I have a situation that I want your advice on. About a month ago, a singer was invited to perform at my college's annual cultural festival. Naturally, the photography club of the college was expected to cover the event, and we did a very good job. But a month after the performance, the singer posted pictures on his Facebook page. Uh, the page has about 240,000 likes. So it's a popular page. Which were uh, photos that were p- captured by us without giving any due credit to the team, let alone individual photographer. Plus, it seems like a lot of them was from this one from G. On the one hand, it feels incredible that my work uh, is shared, but sad at the same time due to absence of acknowledgement. So he's asking for, you know, what, what should he do? Uh, I definitely would reach out to this person and say something. You know, it, you really hate when another artist, in this case, you know, a singer, who probably, I don't know what this person, I don't know the person's name, he didn't share that, and what their feelings are on sharing their, their music. You know, maybe they openly share their music, maybe they don't. But generally, artists want to get paid for their work. You know, they're, they're not... They like doing it, but they need to get paid. Right, right. So the artist is probably wanting people to pay him for his music. Um, and then he goes out and steals these photos. I don't know anything about from the all. What I just read you is all the evidence I know. Right. But 240,000 but 240, likes is, yeah. is quite substantial. What is a blue tick, though? That means you're verified on. Yeah, I didn't say that online when I. I didn't say that when I was reading through it, but a blue tick on Facebook means you've been verified or certified or something like that. Um, we don't have one yet, but I'd, that'd be nice to have one, <laughs> just to say we did. 
Yeah, I mean, I would reach how out difficult to, would it be? Yeah. Yeah. Reach out to them and say, hey, dude, you know, awesome you used my image. Um, please give me some photo credit. I, I always like to try the, the soft approach first to see if we can't work something out before getting nasty. And then, you know, depending on how that works, decide whether you want to go any further. But I'd reach out and say, hey, that's awesome you used my image. Um, would have liked to, you know, if you were to use some photo credit, would you mind going back and posting some, uh, some photo credit there for me? Unless you're trying to get paid for it. If you're a commercial photographer or if you're somebody who you think you should get paid for it, you're going to have to go down another route, maybe send them a bill. I, you know, as Tim and I have said before, and I've said, I'm a hobby photographer. So it does upset me. And I've talked about this in the past. When I see people use my image, they never asked for it. You know, they stole it, basically. Um, and, and I do have reached out and I have asked people to take it down before. I mean, I can't say that I've ever found one of my pictures, uh, but people have found my pictures on Flickr, asked to use pictures. Um, definitely uh, New York Met pictures when I've been at the game. Uh, one guy particularly uh, would contact me about pictures, but I, I don't know how I'd feel. I'd probably be annoyed. And I would just want the credit. I, I'm not looking to get paid for it because, like you said, I'm a hobbyist at best. So, but it yeah. sounds like uh, they. Uh, they were pictures. He he responded. I don't know if you looked at the bottom of it, and uh, he did uh, indicate that they were not provided to the person. So he apparently took it from somewhere. Hmm. Yeah. So, so wait, the, the the singer took it from somewhere. Yeah, uh, he asked other members, and they confirmed that they were not asked to provide the photos. So yeah, maybe he picked the photos either from my Facebook timeline or the club's timeline. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen before. You know, with some of my photos, where somebody took it. And then uh, Kristen asked, what would you do if they altered the image alone with no credit? This has happened to me recently on Instagram. A client posted a photo and used filters on it. You know, I hate that because as a photographer, especially, I don't know what Kristen's situation is, but especially if you're someone who's trying to start up a business or maybe you already have one of photography and your photos are you, they represent you. And then you have people who are taking them and adding some kind of filter or doing whatever else to them that you haven't approved. And then other people see it and, and think that that's your work. So it, it really does hurt you. It really could hurt you. I just didn't say it does. It really could hurt you. Um, but it's a touchy situation because you, 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 you got to walk a line here where you don't want to piss off the client. Now, if, if, you know, this is one thing, if it's somebody you shot and had a contract with, um, and you know, the contract said you're not to do this kind of things. Yeah. I probably would reach out to them, but I always like to, I always like to do it from a, a point of trying to be nice at first to see if we can't work something out. So I think if you go in hard, they're going to come, they're going to become de defensive right away. Right. You try and work something out, uh, if you can. And then you're going to have to decide what is it, if especially Kristen said she's trying to start, she's trying to start a business, especially if you're trying to start a business, you got to weigh the, the, the good and bad here, where if, if you go after them hard, you may, you may lose them as a client forever, but who are they going to tell? Right. And that's, that's the yeah. bigger part. So, you know, that's where you got to decide, is it worth it? Am I, am I losing enough here with this? Uh, what they're doing that I need to go hard with it or just hate it, and move on. <laughs> you just hate it and move on. And I think, you know, if you look at bigger businesses, they picked our battles too. Right. I know, Tim, you're in workers' comp, right? Correct. I'm not going to ask you anything specific about workers' comp in your company. But workers' comp people across the country and probably the world pick their battles. Some cases they fight, some cases they don't fight. Some cases you settle because it's the, yeah. the smart business decision. And, and I deal with the auto liability, too, and it's the yeah. same thing. I mean, you got to know what you can win and what you can't win and, and what's going to create a bad mind in a judge's eye for future yeah. cases. It's all perception. Yeah, it, it is that. And part of that is, you know, even in the cases where you don't decide to fight, it doesn't mean that you like it. It doesn't mean that you agree mm -hmm. with it. It doesn't mean you won't fight it somewhere down the road again. Um, but you're going to just, uh, this, this can be used in a thousand different scenarios. You know, you, as a right. parent, you got to pick your battles. Um, as an employee at a workplace, you got to pick your battles. You always have to pick your battles. You have to decide, is this an event that is worthy of me going all out? 
I, I, mean? I can't. I couldn't agree with you more. You don't want to lawyer up every time something goes wrong. Yeah. And Chris said that's why I haven't done anything because I really don't. I really don't know. Yeah, and I, you know. Uh, most of these things are in the gray area, Kristen, and I hate it too. I see people steal my stuff. I have reached out to some. Uh, we had a 5K walk uh, run here in the, in the city. And I emailed them and said, hey, awesome. Y'all use my image in your pamphlet that went out. They, they, they did a pamphlet and sent it everywhere and had my image in it. I never gave them permission for that. And I guess technically I could have got a lawyer and said, you use it and had this kind of publication and I want this kind of money. Mm -hmm. But personally, I did not want to go through all that. So I reached out to them and said, hey, you know, y'all, you didn't take this photo. You didn't buy this photo. I, I didn't say all that up front. I said this nicely. I said to them, hey, thanks for using my photo in here. Um, how did y'all end up getting it? I don't remember, you know, giving permission to anybody to allow them to use this. And they responded back and said, oh, the first lady said, I'm not in charge of that. Let me find out. And they, then they came back and said they got it off the city's website. The city did have the right to use it for them. So these people actually stole it from the city uh, <laughs> and used it. But I ended up letting it go. We ended up on decent terms and said, hey, if you guys ever do anything here again, you can use that photo again. Just this time, give me photo credit. That's all you need. Yep. So, I, Kristen, I know I didn't give you a rock-solid answer, but there is no rock-solid answer, in my opinion. And this is something people are passionate about. Some people, you know, don't put watermarks on their images and are fine with people using it and, and going everywhere with it. Other people put crazy watermarks on there because they don't want anybody taking it. Um, you know, it's it's something that is, con is controversial. It's probably Mac and PC and... Nikon and Canon and Sony. Oh, you keep Sony in there. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> did that just for you, Tim? I know you did. <laughs> and you know, you talk, you, my uh, my sister in law she uh, she dances for a dance club, and uh, at this uh, one festival, they put out a flyer this year, and lo and behold, her picture was there on the cover. But the funny thing is, I, I looked. I had to take a double take. It. I was like, it's definitely her head, but I'm not so certain certain it was her body on it. Really, they photoshopped yeah. the body. I think well, Our definitely. Head. Made, well, yeah, they definitely. Uh, she she looked thinner. Let's put it that way. She wasn't upset with it. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, so it was, I, it was her body just they, it was, they it was modified her body. It was, yeah, it was def definitely enhanced. I, I remember looking at saying, "I was like, that don't look." I was like, "Something is wrong with this," and we all got a good laugh out of it. Uh, and Kristen said the client also wa uh, cropped the watermark. Yeah, that is to me. That, when that's a, now that's a problem. That's theft. When somebody does that, they know they're doing something wrong, and yet they do it yeah. anyway. You know, still you have to decide where you can do anything with it. But you just, guys, what is wrong with people? <laughs> yeah, that that's that's an issue. That's intent. What is wrong with people? I think people have just gotten used to stealing, and it's they think it's fine. All right. Um, so I don't know if you've seen this thing behind me, this image behind me, and I'm sure anybody who's watching has wondered. The heck is that thing back there? Have you? Wanted? I see it, but I, I can't figure out what you it is. You can't figure out what it is. So I yeah. will. It's too me, small for me to see. So let's see if I can get it up there where you can see it. Boom! Oh, I saw you. Uh, your uh, your Mavic uh, is Mavic. draining. Your Mavic Pro is draining your computer resources. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to get a little nerdy here um, for everybody. If you are a Mac user, you probably don't ever do this kind of stuff. If you're a PC user, you might. Um, I am build when, the Mavic that you just talked about, Tim. The it shoots 4K video, and I brought right. it in. And editing that 4K video has been um, a, a struggle for my PC. Even though I have a great PC, I have a you know Core i7 with a lot of RAM and all this kind of stuff. Um, but the 4K video was 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 stressing it. A little bit because you know i think that the version of the i7 i have is probably four years old now which is not that old but a lot has happened since then so it yeah, didn't have 4k when you when you got that computer yeah. so I've, i'm upgrading to a uh the the one i have is this is going to get nerdy again a four core system with eight a hyper threads. so a total of eight hyper threads or eight cores including hyper threading right. This one is six with 12, so six cores with 12 hyperthreading uh, cores. 
Uh, it's still Intel. And if you are a Mac user, I think Intel is your only option. The, Currently, the, yes. They, I, I think they used to have other options, but right now they only have Intel Correct. options. And my last two builds have been Intel. Intel is, is you know, the leader still, so I can see why Apple would use them. Um, there is some exciting news coming out from AMD that is mm -hmm. going to uh, rival the, the, the Intel chips and maybe surpass them in speed, but definitely be cheaper. And why? Yeah, I'll tell you, I didn't yeah. think that was going to happen again after. Uh, well, we'll have to see when it comes out. After the Core Two Duo came out, what about eight years ago? AMD almost fell off the yeah. planet, and and they're back. This is why, for photographers, if you're a, a Mac or a PC user, this is why I'm bringing this up. Why you should care, um, especially if you're heavy in Photoshop. I, in my mind, PCs or in uh, CPUs, PC or Mac doesn't matter. CPUs plateaued a few years ago. They used to keep that Moore's mm -hmm. law of every 18 months, they double in speed and, and half in price or whatever that rule was. They followed that for a long time. And then a few years ago, we, like we hit a wall. Now, then all they were focusing on is lower power, lower heat, all these kind of things. So, you know, hitting mm -hmm. the laptop market and the, and the tablets and all those kind of things because those were exploding. But those of us who use desktops for, you know, video editing, if you want to edit video or do lots of photo editing with, uh, you know, and need a lot of power, desktops are still the way to go. They will outperform any laptop because laptops – you're most likely going to use a mobile version of the processor, which is not going to be as fast. They're not going to generally have as much RAM, and they're just they're just they don't have the space to be as fast. Right, and then yeah. heat is going to be the bigger barrier yeah. to to it. it's going to throttle it down generally. You can go out and spend a lot of money and get a you know a high end fast laptop. Spend that same kind of money on desktop, and you will blow that laptop away. Yes. Yeah. So, dollar for dollar, you're going to beat it. But for those of us who want more power, and if you're doing, if you now have your DSLR, you're taking 4K video with it, or you got a drone, and you're taking 4K video with it, and you're dealing with all this 4K video, there's not enough power out there. You you need more and more power, and they've plateaued. The reason the AMD thing and why it affects everybody, I think, is if they can come in and challenge Intel both in speed and in price, then it, Intel is not going to lose the AMD. They're going to come out, and they're going to come out with faster speeds and, and, and not match them on price, but they're going to make it worth your while to pay the extra. That's going to benefit the PC market, the Mac market, and maybe the, maybe the AMD chips come, are, are priced well and perform well, and Apple says, you know what, we're going to offer that as a, an option now, and you have... Uh, a better price and, and more power. So I think it benefits us all to have a strong AMD, which is competitive yes. Intel, and have the two of them battle out and keep giving us better and better um, speed and pricing. Right. Like you said, uh, I mean, Intel had the TikTok for for years. Now it's TikTok talk. <laughs> yep. So they're they're slowing down. And granted, I think what are they down to ten nanometers for uh, the the die and. In and, and I know now I'm geeking out a little bit also, but uh, that you think about how tiny that is, how how tiny can it get? Yeah. I mean, so, I don't even know what's below the nanometer. Then I don't know yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna geek you out guys out a little more, and then we'll move on. But I'm just gonna show you a few things with the build. Okay. So first off, here's the motherboard without the CPU in it. Um, here is the the back side of the CPU in my fingers. Um, but that is the back side of the CPU. That's the CPU installed. Another shot of the CPU installed. Now, this is something, if you're getting a desktop computer. Absolutely. That's you, you definitely need to look into this. You've heard of hard drives. I've shown you one before. Let's see. Let's bring us back to me or us. I've shown you a hard drive before. Mm -hmm. How big that is. And then you've seen an SSD. Okay, precise. The SSD is is not only smaller; it's much much faster. So I know it, you know, multiple times faster. Um, so if you're bu building a new computer, you want an SSD as your uh, operating system drive and your main program drives. Until they came out with this, and it's been out a little bit, but this is a um, this is a hard drive. This, in this case, a 500 gig hard drive that plugs into the motherboard itself. And there's variations on this thing, but it is a multitudes faster than an SSD. 
Yeah. So I'm putting Photoshop. Yeah, that is that is definitely not a yeah. bottleneck on anymore. No, I'm putting the operating system on here and my Adobe Suite and a few other things like that I'm putting on there. Um, so then we have that. I'm also putting 64 gig of RAM and leaving, leaving space to add another 64 if I need it because it'll go up to 128. And then the last shot, and then we'll go, and then we'll end this part. Is, is what, card. what this? No, this is what's uh, maybe hard to see, but this is looking from the bottom up in the case. Um, the two RAM slots well, are the white things, and the top thing is a radiator, cooler? water right. a water cooler radiator. You can see the tubes coming down. It's right now not plugged into the CPU, but that is a water cooler radiator. Now, is that the course? That looks like a Corsair, right? It is a Corsair H one hundred i version two yeah i think I, I think that's a i don't think i had the 80 i think i probably have the 100 i mean i've been using this for a long time very these the all-in-one loops just yeah. make it so easy now are you putting a graphics card in oh yeah yeah i, I have a graphics card in there what, what are you going to put in it, it's the same one that's in the, my system now it's a nine okay. uh, nvidia 960 or something like that so you know, in Lightroom and Photoshop, they there's only a few things in Premiere, Adobe Premiere. It's only a few things that use the graphics card. It's not as much as you would you would like. Um, Lightroom is not you know they've done a little bit with it. Premiere does some with it. If Premiere is the video editor, and when you go to export and you and and you know do the encoding, if you haven't done any effects, then it's just a CPU. So I think there's some effects, not all effects. I think like an unsharp mask and a few other things like that. It'll use the GPU, but most of it is going to be CPU. So the GPU is still not used as much as you would like. But in the cases where it is used, having a good GPU is, is helpful. The streaming software we use here, it does use the GPU quite a bit. So that's another reason why I'd want it. Um, Pete's Tech Den says he, he uses one of those M2s, M2 SATA or M2. Yeah, M2. M.2 or something. M.2, yeah, I may be saying it wrong. Has one in his laptop. Yeah, I mean, putting something like that or an SSD in your laptop, if you're using that, can be a real, um, a real boost to that to that computer, make it feel new again. Like so that. now, what is that? A Cabby Lake that you're using? Is that the newest version? What? Your uh, the the processor. That is uh, no. That is uh, X99. Uh, is it Broadwell? Okay, Broadwell. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't even know what I have, but my system's probably about four years old, and no doubt every once in a while I start feeling the the slowdowns on it, yeah. and, and I, I'm looking to do one, but I may hold off again. It's <laughs> it's, it's working. It's like, so I really want to spend two grand when I don't really have to. I know that's a, that's a struggle. Uh, I know we're probably boring the crap out of Kristen with all, <laughs> <laughs> with all She's this sleeping. talk. <laughs> she probably left. Um, but you know, every photographer uses a computer. With the I, I, I personally like to build my own, um, and it's Sorry. off here on my left hand side, and pieces all hanging out all over the place. Actually, in, in the stage it's in right now, the power button isn't even hooked up, so I got to start it with a, a screwdriver. Uh, I don't know if you know that trick where you touch the right, you touch the right um, pins, and it'll start the computer. Well, my last motherboard actually had a switch on the motherboard to turn it on. Oh, that's very good. But uh, it's it's important to, if you're going to be upgrading, and all of us photographers will at some point be getting a new laptop, a new desktop, whatever it is. You know, think through those components. Think through what's going to be in there. And I would recommend just my my minimum recommendation is a 16 gig of RAM. I, I like. Oh yeah. I should go even higher, but the 16 gig is the minimum. Um, you could probably get away with a Core i5, depending on what you're doing there uh, with that. But, you know, with the new AMD chips coming out, you may want to look at that. And as far as at least have an SSD, if not an M2 drive, for your OS drive. If you need a lot of data, a lot of photos, if you're putting a lot of photos on there, you may want to have a normal hard drive, that you know, two or four terabyte drive. But you want to have an SSD or an M2 drive as your main drive. It'll really make a difference. And no, I, I don't build computers for other people. So other than my mom, I'll build it for my mom. But outside of that, yeah, yeah no, I, I stopped that yeah. a long time ago. All right, so then you got then you got to service it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing when you build your own, there's no one to call for help. Yeah, you yourself. are the help. All right, I, I have something else to talk about here, Tim. Did you hear about the dude in Seattle? Let's see if I can find this. The dude in Seattle. What the heck. <laughs> 
who got 30 j- days of jail time because of his drone. No, I did not. Yeah, he got 30 days in jail. He knocked a woman unconscious with his drone. Um, 30 days in jail and a $500 fine. Plus, he's going to have another court case to see how much he owes the woman for her uh, medical bills. Yeah, and who knows? She may sue him civilly for for that. Apparently, what he was doing is there was a a gay pride parade in Seattle, and he was flying his drone over top of it. If you're a, a, a drone owner, you've probably, hopefully, gone and, and registered with the FAA, and you should know because there's only like five rules, so it's not like they loaded you down with rules and you can't figure it out. There's only a few rules. I, I say five, but I don't know if it's exactly five. And one of them is you can't fly over people, and right. a, a parade people. of people is it's a lot of people. Even, yes. <laughs> And things can, and in this case, did go wrong, where he was flying his drone and something happened. It smacked into the building. And his was a um, a Phantom. I don't know if I see here what kind it was. But a Phantom, which is like you have. You have a Phantom 3. It might have been a Phantom 4. I don't remember. I saw it somewhere. And that thing, you know, fell and landed on this lady from however high up. And according to this, knocked her unconscious. And there was like an off-duty fireman there that was there that helped her and... and, and with all that. So I think they're trying to make a, a, um, example of this guy. They went for more. They went for 90 days and a $5,000 fine or something like that. They only got 30 days. Um, and this guy runs a photography business, uh, aerial photography business. So he definitely knew better than this. And maybe it doesn't go into detail to say whether he had a permit to fly there or not. If he did, that kind of negates flying over people. You can get a permit to do some of this stuff. But I doubt Tim and I, since we haven't passed all the exams, would be allowed to get a permit to do that. Maybe he did. But they said it was um, he used it in a careless manner. Reckless endangerment the term there. So be careful with your drones and do not I- fly over people. My father told me that uh, just just I think it was just yesterday, in Manhattan, a uh, drone flew into a building. Yeah. So, just uh, I mean, I really haven't heard much recently. Haven't heard much of an uproar about. And I granted, yeah. especially up in the year this time of the year, I, I'm not bringing my drone out because it's it's not exactly the nicest weather to be out there in it. Yeah, it was getting better down here, so it's it we have been out some. Um, just a, uh, what they say a month before that, somebody had. Had was they were putting pyrotechnics up on the Seattle Needle. This, this event that I talked about earlier was Seattle. Mm-hmm. They put they're putting ty- pyrotechnics up there. So there were guys up there setting this stuff up. Somebody brought their drone up there, and which is probably beyond the height limit. You can only go yeah, 400 that's over feet. 400. Yeah. In the United States, you can only go 400 feet. And then I don't know if he did this intentionally or if he lost control, but you can see it hover. And then just boom, take off and run smack dab into the needle and fall down onto the area where the guys were working. And then the guys walk over to it and, um, you know, are looking at the camera and do that kind of stuff. And so, then laughed at it. <laughs> yeah. So that guy, I don't, you know, I don't know what the rest of the story is on that guy. But, yeah, you can't be doing that kind of stuff. You're going to get us all in trouble and banned and stuff. But I will say, you know, um, drones are a lot of fun. And, Tim, I brought, I brought this back out. Remember oh, this the little, SEMA. <laughs> this yeah. is the $50 little piece of junk that Tim and I both bought. Tim bought it first, and then I bought it. <laughs> it is really light. It's, it's actually under the weight limit, so you don't even have to register it with the FAA. Uh, it is a pile of junk. It is really yes. The camera on it, they say it's 720p. If it is, yeah. it's like <laughs> at the maximum amount of compression that you could ever do to something. Maybe it was 72.0 and we just can't see the point. It just is awful. But I will tell you, we've taken this out into a larger field because I've only flown it in my front yard where it had lots of problems. We took it out to a larger field and I let my son fly this while I flew the Mavic. And in a larger field, we have room. It actually did pretty well. He took it up. God, it must have been 100 feet. He took it up that high. The problem is it loses connection and then sometimes it starts going some way. And those little lights on the bottom, you can barely see them. You have like green here green and, red and red here. When it's a bright, sunny day, you can't see that at all. What you can't tell, is it facing me or facing the other way? Right. So you're trying to tell it to come towards you. It's going the other way. And it's just, it does not much control to it. So he often, but on the good side, what he's done when he loses control 
and we're in a wide open place where there's no people. Um, he just shuts it off and it comes whoo, flying out of the sky from a hundred feet above and smack down on the, on the ground. And because it's so lightweight and everything, no damage. <laughs> yeah, just bounced. No damage at all. We've crashed this thing. I don't know how many times. One of these things got bent where the propeller was hitting it. Right. So we just yeah. bent so just it back down until and... it was not doing it. Um, and the blades. Yeah, it's very durable. The blades are all beat up. It's um, a SEMA, whatever that is. It's a. It's really. If you want to buy your kid one of these, don't buy it for the, the camera. Is worthless. Let's say. Um, but it is fun to play with. Just have some good open space. For that. Now, if you want a, if you want a Melvin update, you know, you know Melvin. <laughs> yes, I do. Which is the name I gave him. His real name is a DJI Mavic. But I do have a small. I did get a couple more accessories. I'll show you for the for him. Um, let's see. I did show you. I had an iPad, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Got the iPad. Where? Oh. I bought a set of, I can't even see them, ND filters. Okay. A set of, I think it's two ND filters and one uh, circular polarizer. Um, I forget what the strengths are. I have that somewhere. But I got, I got those. That, you know, one of the things that when you get it up there, you're often shooting at a really high uh, frame per second. And you, you what you want to get is as close to two times your shutter speed. So if you're, um, if you're, how's that? If your shutter speed is one slash 30, you want to be at 60 frames a second. So what, what, I forget what the rule is there, but to get like a cinematic view, you want, you want to do that. Well, when it's bright and sunny, you can't get that because it's just, right. it's just too much. I did also buy him. Did I show you the, I bought him legs. No, uh, we, I did not see that. So I bought legs. That, that's, I like it because I have that for mine also. Yeah. The Mavic sat so low. And I think I had the front ones on there all the time. The Mavic sat so low, yeah, that you really need to get some legs to make them sit up a little higher. I just like the fact of how small it is when it's so, folded up. Yeah, so he's still halfway folded up. So these legs are the, are the ones I get him. It helps him sit up. He sits up a good, you know, couple of inches higher now, so that when you landed him on the grass, now the blades aren't smacking into the grass. Right. But I am. I don't know if other first drone flyers are like me, and that I am so risk adverse that I get him up there, and I've had birds come check him out. Like, okay, he's coming down right now. I've had bu- you know buzzard <laughs> come by, that. like okay, we're out. Um, I've seen pictures, videos of a bird going after it. It'll kill the drone. Yeah, it may it may kill the bird too, but it'll kill the drone. And you get up about a hundred, two hundred feet, and it just seems so small, like it may just go go away. And I see all these people doing these videos of it just you know flying. They're intentionally they're still under control, flying off and doing all these nice views of all their, their little town. I have trouble getting him just a um, just a few, uh, you know a few hundred yards a hundred yards away from me. Yeah, I, I, I'm like that. And my uh, my cousin he goes really far, and I'm like, yeah, no, I can't do that. I, I'm not comfortable yet, and I, I haven't flight enough yet where I'm like, let it get out of my line. I don't even want to say line of sight, but you're right. When it's 400, 500 feet away from you, it's hard to see it. Nevertheless, it's got a, a like a five mile range, and I'm like five miles. Yeah. Who the heck can see it at that's five insane. miles? That is insane. Yeah. Well, Tim, that's the main stuff I have. We actually have gone further. This has lasted longer than I thought. Um, I know Tim. We usually you're, do. You're out next week. Correct. Um, we'll see. We'll have to see what my life is like. I've been so busy lately at work that I haven't had time to devote here. But I also I also want us to think, you guys out there to think. Tim and I think too. Um, we have been doing the photo contest in the main group. Gosh, it's probably going on three years now. I think I think we started it August of like two and a half years ago or something. Um, you know, ideas for topics, something you'd be interested in. Other things, I've I've seen people do like photo scavenger hunts. I don't fully understand how you do that online. 
But if you got ideas that'll be fun events to do within the group, the beginner group or the the, the JPEG to Raw group, um, shoot them my way at, at podcast at JPEG to Raw dot com. Shoot them over there. I'd love to hear what your ideas are uh, in in getting more activity in the group. And Errors Gaming is wanting me to check out his intros and outros. Can't do that right now while we're doing a show. I'm not sure if this is a spammer or not, but we'll we'll continue. Uh, so give me your ideas over there, and we'll we'll see what else do we have, Tim. Again, so I'll, I'll just do this in the, in the closing. Uh, you can get the audio here in the Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, Our Heart Radio, TuneIn, Podomatic, Podbean, and Google Play Music. That's where you can get the audio feed of this. You can also get the video on iTunes, YouTube, and Vimeo. And I am working on, I was almost there this weekend, the other show we do, it's on a once a month show called The Photo Review Show, where A.D. Wheeler and I review, mainly A.D., review the uh, photos that were entered into both the beginner contest and the regular contest. We're trying to keep that to about 10 photos, so if, if there's a lot more than that, you know, not every photo will make the make it into that review. But we do that once a month, review those photos, and I'm really close to getting it published on iTunes. So right now, it's just in Vimeo and on YouTube. There will only be a video feed for that one. Uh, there won't be an audio feed because a photo review of an of audio f- won't work that well. But that will be in iTunes within the next week, I would say. So check it out. If you're not part of our JPEG to Raw photography group on uh, on uh, Facebook, go out there and check it out. I only have the link here for Facebook slash groups slash JPEG to Raw. The beginner group, what's the link there? And the beginner group is doesn't have an easy name like that. Just search for J.P. Raw Beginners on Facebook and you will find it. And then there's still the lowly forums, jpedraw.com slash forums. <laughs> I have moved the entire website a few a uh, month or two ago from our old host back to one I used before and then that we had another website on. And it's in a virtual private server, which is a lot of speed. So the, the forums, not only are they awesome and have a lot of good information there, and I keep posting things in there, but they're now even faster than they were before. Um, but I do have a, a, a we got to answer a small little question when you go to enter, because for whatever reason, they're a magnet for spammers. And I have people trying to join every single day for whatever reason to spam their stupidity into my into that group <laughs> so um if you have any trouble getting in or answering anything email me at podcast at com. so and uh that's all let's go ahead and close close it up there tim right okay yeah yep all right until next show keep it raw good night everybody good night everybody